Hi everyone, Todd here from RVC. Uh, we have some inquiries about what Beth and I use to train our dogs on lure coursing. And this is our homemade lure coursing machine. Uh, we wanted something that is budget friendly and can do the job of the larger machines, but at a fraction of the cost. All in all, um, all the components that I'm going to show you, we have spent a little under $150 making it. Um, the box itself is constructed using half-inch Baltic birch plywood. Um, it's a very strong, durable plywood. It's got many layers to it. You can find it at most of your home improvement stores like Lowe's or Home Depot. Um, we use a good quality exterior paint for the box. Um, the box will be exposed to ground moisture, dust, dirt, mud. Um, so you want something to protect it, something that's very durable, cleanable. In the top, we decided to go with the chalkboard paint. There have been many times where you have a pen and paper out in the field, gust of wind come up, blow it all over the place. So we figured using chalk would be the best way to keep track of it. Now on the inside, I will show you some of the components. I've got a little storage area here to hold your, hold your pulleys. And down inside here holds the 12 volt battery, 12 volt motor, and the variable speed controller. Variable speed controller is very important. I mean, you don't have to have it, but for us, if you have a dog chasing lure and it gets sidetracked or maybe doesn't see the lure, you can back the speed off till your dog catches back up to it or it gets back on track and then you can quickly turn it back up to full speed and, and then keep on going. Um, the pulleys we use are these. Um, these are garage door pulleys and tent stakes. Um, pound them right into the ground, they come up nice and easy. Um, now I welded mine together and if you don't have access to a welder, um, what you can do is, here is one that hasn't been welded yet. Ten stakes come with these little plastic pieces. Um, so we just keep those on there. And that will also help keep um, your pulley from sitting directly on the ground, keep it elevated a little bit, and then your line won't get tangled. The next thing is the kite string we use. This is a Dacron kite string. It has low stretch, it's a 50 pound test, and it comes in rolls of a thousand yards. Um, it's very durable, highly visible, and this string under tension, um, if a dog were to come and get tangled up in it, this will break before the dog's leg breaks. Okay, rarely has it ever ever happened. I don't even know if it has happened, but it surely can. Um, but it's strong enough to get the job done. Now one thing about this particular um, door machine here, this uh, 12 volt motor here, um, there's a pin that kind of holds it locked in place. So when you're transporting, the motor doesn't flop or all over inside there you pull that pin and this motor slides out okay and then you can lock it in this position too now we lock it in place here now it's all locked in when you go to start the machine got it on a very low speed now um, I do like to take some of these tent stakes and plant them behind the box. String will be moving in this direction. So you want to plant them behind here and that'll kind of keep the box steady because the more line that you have out, the tighter the tension, your box may want to tip just a little bit and that'll keep it from uh, tipping. Now, I did mention it, it is on variable speed. Um, you go as slow as you want and it really does crank up fast. Now the, the pulley the machine comes with is just a little plastic one and that's not big enough to keep, them, uh, keep that lure traveling at a pretty good speed. 
So the larger pulley you can put on there, the faster it's, it's going to go. But you don't want the pulley too big or else you're going to be sacrificing the torque that the machine puts out, that the motor puts out. So what I found works good. This is a 7 inch pulley that I attached to the 12 volt motor. Um, I was able to turn this on my lathe and drilled a bunch of holes to make it as light as possible. And this will hold a thousand feet of kite string. Um, but I've seen it where people used, they've taken two plastic plates, put them back to back, and it kind of created this little valley right inside there. And they've hot glued it on, or they used epoxy and put it on. And that, that does work, but I need something that was more durable. And so making it out of wood, of course, was the better option. So this machine, um, granted it's not going to run and beat any land speed records, but it will keep your dog running and it'll get the job done for keeping him or her interested in lure coursing. Um, this particular setup um, runs great at up to 800 yards worth of string and lure. Um, a lot of us, for training purposes, don't need that much, but it, it is an option because a lot of competitions are in the upwards of 800 yards. So if there's any questions you might have, please feel free to leave it down in the comment section and I will answer every comment as best as I can. Oh, one other thing I forgot to mention too is this is a battery charger and main maintainer. Um, got this off of Amazon too. Um, it will keep the battery charged and you can leave this on the battery when you're not running it. That's a good thing about a maintainer. Um, it'll always keep the battery at fully charged. So you never have to worry about taking a half dead battery out there with you. And these batteries do last quite a bit. That 12 volt motor is not pulling a lot of juice. So it will last quite a bit. There's been times Beth and I would be out there running two to three hours and the battery would still be going strong. Um, and I'll leave a link for this also down in the comment section. Okay. Um, thank you for watching the video and uh, enjoy the, the uh, wonderful world of lure coursing.